If any of you have a question, I'll be glad to try and answer it. Yes? Uh, Captain, do you mean that even though the type of criminal is different, we'll have to watch for these con men, swindlers, and bunko artists in the same old places? No, the fact is you'll find con men almost any place. From the scrubbiest parts of town all the way up to the playgrounds of the social set. And in each case, they manage to fit right into the background they're working against. Some look more like they're wealthy victims than the victims themselves. And some are wealthy in their own right, and getting wealthier with each trick they pull. I can tell you the story uh, behind a case just like that. Another one from my files, and this is particularly interesting, because the man who was swindled was so completely fooled that he actually went on a search for the con man to give him more money. I was in my office one morning when a call came in from the lieutenant in charge of the Missing Persons Bureau. I just had a man in here looking for Leland Cameron James. That's right. Sure, he's one of James' suckers, written all over his face, and he's come back for more. Well, he's not the first one, you tell him. I didn't have the heart, John. Besides, you're the expert. I sent him up. Thanks, you're a pal. Oh, he's here now. I'll see you later. Come in. Hello. I'm Rich Halliday, the lieutenant downstairs. I know he told me over the phone. Won't you sit down, Mr. Halliday? Thank you. Do you know where I might find Leland Cameron James? Yes, I do. You played the stock market with this Mr. James? You can tell me. I only want to help you. Well, I did have some stock dealings with him. I, I lost quite a bit of money due to an unfortunate circumstance, and Mr. James said he was going to help me make it back, but I haven't been able to find him. Mr. Halliday, Leland Cameron James is in jail. He's a confidence man. He took you for that money you lost. Well, no, you must be thinking about a different man. Worked with a very attractive woman, Mary Hale Brown. Mary? It must be the same one. Oh, it's impossible. It, it couldn't have been put on. The whole thing? It was the whole thing. Worked out in advance, step by step. Let me explain how they did it. Then you'll understand. Like other criminal groups, con men have their own language. They call the first step setting up the mark. Mr. James, the inside man in confidence lingo, and his confederate called the Roper, started by going over a list of possible victims, studying their photographs and all the information they could gather on their lives, their habits, their likes and dislikes, until they hit on the right one. I've got him, Lee. Ridge Halliday, right here on the society section. One of Boston's most eligible bachelors, Mr. Ridge Halliday, returns to the United States in two weeks on the liner Arcady after a six-month tour of Europe and so forth. Let me see his breakdown. Oh, yes. Ridge Halliday. This is no lop-eared mark, this boy. Mm. He's been around. Leave him to me. Oh, I see. Well, you know what they say about all work and no play. Yeah, it makes a lot of jack. I suppose you're figuring on flying over and grabbing that ship? Well, how you read my mind, Mr. James. Seriously, though, Lee, it'll be well worth it. This one is good for plenty. Well, go ahead. He's all yours. The time, spring. The place, an ocean liner. What more perfect setting for romance? And the girl? Lovely was the word for her. Disturbingly lovely. You hadn't realized until now that through all the years gone by, she was the one you were waiting for. Here. Allow me. Allow me. Thank you. Are you, uh, are you enjoying that book? I have a reason for asking. Very much. You wouldn't be the author. Publisher. Oh, how nice. It's a very good book, really. Oh, I think so, too. But unfortunately, my board of directors was right when they advised against publishing it. There are not too many people who like something that's, well, really good. <laughs> that's a compliment. Purely intentional. Well, to save you the trouble of looking at the title page, my name is Halliday, Ridge Halliday. How do you do, Mr. Halliday? I'm... Mrs. Brown. I'm afraid I tried to get the person to introduce us. I didn't know that you... Only until another month, when my degree becomes final. 
Oh, I'm sorry. It was rather a blow when Keith told me that he wanted to get a divorce. I just pulled up anchor, traveling from New York to South America, New York to Paris. May I have a cigarette? Oh, of course. Here we are. Thank you. Uh, would you? <laughs> may I, uh, may I get you something from the bar? I, uh, I make a very good listener, if you care to. There isn't much to say. Keith just became infatuated with someone younger. Well, personally, I don't think Keith showed very good sense. <laughs> Thank you. You're from New York, aren't you, Mr. Holliday? Boston. But I intend to stay in New York for a while after we dock. Business? To see you. May I? New York is nice in the spring. You really fell for it, didn't you, Mr. Halliday? And you had no way of knowing all of this was only step number two. Shelling out the con or gaining the victim's confidence. New York. You'd been there many times before, Mr. Halliday, and always hated it. The strange unfriendliness of a city so crowded with faceless people hurrying nowhere. But now it was different. Warm, welcoming, exciting. Because you were in love. Mary... On board, you said another month. When is the day? Oh, the 15th. Oh, it's a long, long way off. But you hardly know me, Ridge. Well, you're right. There are a lot of things I don't know about you, but I'm going to find out about them. Hour by hour, day by day. Why, oh, I've never really felt this way about anybody or anything before. Oh, you're very sweet, Ridge, but I don't think we ought to talk about anything until... All right, but on the 16th, look out for shooting stars and skyrockets... I, I stepped on your foot. No, you didn't. Oh, that's strange. Oh. Well, what do you know? Oh, it's like my day. Uh, I'll ask the waiter if there's anyone here that lost. Oh, there, there might be some identification inside, Rich. Oh. Oh, get thee behind me, Satan. Oh, wait a minute, here's something. Newspaper clipping. Picture of somebody. Leland Cameron James. Mr. James. Why, he lives right here in this hotel. Oh, you know him? My uncle, that is, Keith's uncle, knows him very well. He always wanted me to drop in on him, but I never got around to it somehow. Well, what is this with hiding the face like he's just been arrested or something? <laughs> oh, he's a strange character. Been amassing fortunes in the stock market and hates publicity. At least that's what Keith's uncle told me. Well, let's, let's go up to see him. We'll kill two birds with one stone. Well, I don't know, Ridge. After all, he is a friend of Keith's uncle. Oh, don't be foolish, Mary dear. This James sounds interesting. It might be fun for both of us. Well, a fairly exciting day so far, wasn't it, Mr. Halliday? All by chance? Not on your life. You were swallowing the bait in step number three, called moving up the mark. In simpler language, steering you to meet the inside man. Well, this is Mary Hale Brown, Mr. James. Senator Brown's niece. Oh, so you're old Brownie's niece. Glad to see you. Come in. I'm glad you caught me. I was just on my way downtown. How is old Brownie, anyway? Well, I haven't seen him too recently. You know, Keith and I... Are... Yes, I read it in the papers. Oh, I'm sorry. This is Mr. Halliday. We met on shipboard. Oh, a new romance, eh? Well, good for you, my girl. Glad to see you, sir. I'm glad to meet you, Mr. James. Sit down. Sit down. I'm sorry I was the room just now when you came to the door. I thought I might have been those reporters again. They've been giving me a bad time. Oh, I told Mr. Halliday that you were publicity shy. Hmm. Uh, when he saw that picture of you in your wallet. Yes, I opened it to see if there was any identification in it, sir. I did lose it. I'm glad that you found this, Holiday. Well, there was a lot of money in it. No, it's not the money. I wouldn't want anybody to see this wire connecting me with the syndicate. Of course, you'll keep this a secret between yourselves. Why, you make it all sound so illegal, Mr. James. Well, let's call it questionable. Well, now that you both know, this syndicate that I'm connected with, we buy stock in small companies, raise the price and then sell. No, really? Can they still do that? 
You know, I like you, Holiday. You sound like a skeptic. Do you happen to have a hundred dollars on you? Well, I... I think there's still time for me to get you in on that Corday copper deal. I'll make you a nice profit, and before dinner time. And you'll buy the dinner, Holiday. Oh, I'd be glad to. I, I know a quiet little place in the... Now, middle. remember, not a word of this to anyone. And so you had step number four, Mr. Halliday. They call it spinning him the yarn, or letting the sucker find out about a scheme for making some easy money. A questionable scheme, of course, but safe, which made it all the more interesting. And by the time you had dinner in that quiet little place in the village, you had step number five, the convincer, in which they allowed you to have a taste of profit under that questionable but highly interesting scheme. Well, now that you've got the cold cash in your hand and it seems to be accepted as legal tender, I suppose you're convinced the syndicate can still do that, eh, Halliday? Well, I'm sure Ridge never doubted it, Mr. James. No, I did, really, but that was this afternoon. 220 for 100. You know, if I were at the track, I'd parlay... Oh, wait a minute, young man. You know the chance I took. Oh, I... I won't mention it again, Mr. James. I, I feel very strongly about it. Very strongly indeed. Um, why don't we all go to the Topaz? I understand they have an awfully good floor show there. Yes, let's forget about business and go on to town. What do you say, Halliday? Mm, sure, let's go. <laughs> so he turned you down flat. But don't worry. It was only step number six in the plan. Raising the mark's temperature. A very effective psychological move. If something you want is hard to get, you want it all the more. Because next day, while waiting for Mary, you were still beating your brain, trying to figure some way to get Leland Cameron James to change his mind. But Mary was way ahead of you. Well, I'm terribly sorry I'm late, but I stopped in at a bookstore and got to talking to the manager. Oh? No. You know that book I was reading on the boat? I, I've been a little anxious about it. The man said it hadn't been selling at all. Will you lose very much on it? Oh, a few million odd? What? <laughs> interested in the things you do? Mine. Mine? Oh, Mary, you're wonderful. Say, say, you've given me an idea. Maybe if I told Mr. James about my bad break, well, maybe he'd let me try and recoup. Oh, I know it's not exactly honest, but, well, what do you think? Well, it, it's a talking point, anyhow. Let's go up and see if the old boy's in his room. It would be just this once, Mr. James, just to get me out of the hole on that dull book. Well, there's one possibility. Did you ever hear of a stock called Industries? Why, yes, I, I think so. It doesn't amount to much. But the syndicate's going to buy up about 190,000 shares common, boost it, and then dump it. Now, I... Uh, do you think I might get in on that? Are you going to let me tell you this or not? Well, let Mr. James explain, darling. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I... Well, there's an old man by the name of Josiah Speed. He owns 4,000 shares. I tried to buy it from him, but he's a stubborn old bird. I offered him 28000 for the lot, and he turned it down, so I quit. If you're interested... Oh, I don't think I could raise that kind of money, in New York, anyway. Well, I just thought I'd mention it. That's too bad. Wait, if I, if I flew up to Boston, I might, I might get 40000 anyway. Do you think that might do it? Maybe, if you gave him some sort of a story to go with it. Like you were a representative from the Patagonian Orphan Society or something, or I don't know. I couldn't bring myself to do anything like that. Oh, that wouldn't stop me. I'd give him a story, all right, and I'll walk out with that stock. You'll see. Go ahead. It's your money. <sighs> yes, it was your money, Mr. Halliday, but not for long. Oh, yes, that was step number seven, going over the books. And in it, they found out just how much they could take you for. Forty thousand dollars. The flight to Boston was a short one. But being away from Mary and the thought of the killing you were going to make in the market made every moment seem an age. And on the night train back, you couldn't sleep. The stock deal. You had to put it over. Mary. You had a little surprise for her that you hoped would seal her heart to yours. But now it was morning and you'd soon know. Darling, I've got it. 40,000 in cash. But never mind about that. I've brought something else. Oh, Ridge. Oh, but I can't. Not until... Well, not to wear, just to hold. Until the 16th. Please. Uh... Oh, Ridge, I, I think people are looking at us. Let them. I'll go see this Josiah Speed fellow right away. 
I'll call you as soon as I leave the place. Oh, I know you'll make it, darling. And come on up to Mr. James' apartment. I'll be there. My dad's at the Mount Holly Old People's Home. Or at least he was until last week. When he passed on, I realized I hadn't taken very good care of him. The one way I can ease my conscience is to give money to that home. I want to give them a lot. All I possibly can. The last man who came here. Greed written all over him. But you... At least you'll do something with the money. Something an old man like me can understand. Hmm? But something going on with that stock. My estate can get a lot more than 30000 40000 it's, it's all I've got, Mr. Speed. Please take it. Believe me, it's better than your estate can do. Well, I'd be able to see some good done before I go. Yes. Yes. It's in that drawer there. You've made me feel good, Mr. Speed. Just sign the transfer on the back there. That did it, Mr. Holliday. You and your money were parted. Step number nine. What the con man calls the fleece job. Good day, good nurse. Afternoon. Okay, Barney. Well, how'd I do, Amy? What do you want, a medal or something? <laughs> that Mark was so blind, a dog in the bed could have convinced him. Get dressed, you old hag. We've got more work to do. Oh, stop worrying. Barney's probably got the $40,000 in his kick right now. Well, I've got it. Oh, <laughs> did I give him a story, old brother? You should have seen him when I... Oh, what's the matter? Oh, Reg, dear, we tried to call you at Mr. Speed's house, but you'd already left. You tried to call me? Well, why, has something happened? Mr. James, what's this all about? I knew it would happen. I knew it. The syndicate found out that I let you win on the deal. Oh, fine. Oh, well, now what? What? It means they can't go through with the deal, that's what. Do you know how much money I stand to lose because you wanted to make a few miserable dollars? You stand to lose? What about me? Forty thousand dollars I gave that man. Mary, what am I going to do? Oh, Ridge, do Isn't there something you can do? If I sold these shares, what could I get for them? Both what they're worth, $1,000 for the lot. Oh, good Lord. Well, you've had it, Mr. Halliday. $40,000 down the drain. There was only one step left now, number 10. They call it giving him the brush or getting rid of you now that the job was done. And they did that cleverly, too. I know what I'll do. Oh, what a fool I've been. Why didn't I think of this before? I'll go back there. I'll get my money back. I'll get it back if I have to tear that place apart. And that old man, too. Oh, wait a minute, Ridge. I I'm sure the call will come through any minute. And I'll explain to them what happened and see if I can't get them to let you make it up somehow. Oh, there it is. Thank heaven. Hello, Coswell. Detective. Well, there must be some mistake somewhere. Now, look here. The next time the clerk sends somebody up here, you tell him to call me first. Do you understand? There's a detective on his way up to this room. Now, look here, I don't know what this is all about, but you better get in that room there. Mr. James? That's right. I'm Detective Flannery. We're looking for a man named Rich Halliday. Halliday? That's right. He visited a certain Josiah Speed this morning. I was there. I saw him. Something terrible has happened. Well, why do you look for him here? He mentioned he was stopping at this hotel. I told this detective. They said downstairs they thought he was a friend of yours. Well, there must be some mistake. We don't know any Mr. Halliday. You'd better be telling the truth now, because Josiah Speed's been found dead. Well, we've never laid eyes on Halliday. I can assure you of that. Now, if that is all... If you say so, Mr. James. He's lying. I know he's lying. Don't worry, miss. We'll find him. I 
didn't kill him. It's crazy. Oh, we know you didn't, Derek. Well, you can't be sure what a jury will say. Now, look here. I'm going to Chicago in a few days on another deal. You hop a plane and fly there and wait for me at the hotel Billings. I'm sure this Josiah Speed thing will blow over. And I think I can arrange for you to make back your $40,000. But I'm going to do it in my own name this time. Now, go on. Get out. Get out. Please come with me, darling. Come with me. Oh, I can't. I've got to meet the lawyers. I'll write to you. He put one over on us, though, Lee. Hmm. He did something we never expected. Well, he certainly did put one over on us, didn't he? Well, I went to Chicago. James didn't show up. I received a telegram that read, uh, Change in plans. Meet me, Brownstone Hotel, Denver. Mary sends all her love. Signed, James. And you got another one in Denver. Now, this is the one that really did it. Sorry, bad news. Syndicate had to disband, and I am leaving for South America. Back in September on New Deal. We'll look you up, and we'll make a killing. And then something about the police having discovered that Josiah Speed died a natural death, and I could go back to Boston. Nothing about Mary in this one. Oh, yes, uh, P.S. Uh, Mary went back with Keith. That's all. She sent you back the ring, of course. Oh, at least I got that back. Yeah, I guess I'm quite a fool to have kept carrying this around with me, as well as for the other Let reasons. Let see that ring, Halliday. Oh, of course. Glass, Halliday. Glass? The one I gave her cost me $10,000. The fabulous Mr. James wasn't the only one who went to jail. His lovely partner, Mary Hale Brown, went too. And the very sick old man and his nurse. Of course, it was too late to help Mr. Halliday. But I think he learned his lesson. I don't think he was ever taken again. Now, that brings up another important point in the con man's technique. The con man relies on something that I'm afraid is part of human nature. The irresistible desire to make fast money on a somewhat shady deal where you're sure you won't be caught. There seems to be a little larceny deep down in everybody's makeup. Just a spark. But the con man knows how to fan it into a hot flame. And that's just as unfortunate for the police as it is for the sucker. I hope I've been able to give you some idea of how the con man operates in actual cases. And there are literally hundreds more in my files downtown. And new ways to take money from unsuspecting victims are being developed every day. Swindles in which people lose anything from small change to hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's your job to keep in mind at all times all the ways in which con men, swindlers, and bunco artists work. And to pass this information on to the public. It's your job, everybody's job, to be well enough informed to recognize the shady scheme when you see it. Or the attractive proposition offered by someone whose background you don't actually know. The so-called chance in a lifetime to make money fast without really working for it. Let's face the facts. No one's going to give you something for nothing. Investigate before you invest. Don't be a sucker for these criminals who are so confident they can fool anyone, even you. Yes, the police stand ready, but they cannot fulfill their purpose alone. You, the citizen, must help, cooperate, meet at least halfway those men who are so willing to go all the way. Let this badge be your shield, too. Your shield against those who flout the law. Your guarantee of security in your home, in your business, in your city or town, wherever it may be.